Welcome to the Friday edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 354. Did you write it down? Yes, 354. Good, I did. good, good. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. I also wrote down that it's Friday, the 15th of December. I, go, I want to welcome you guys all to another casual show where uh, friends just sit around, gather, and talk about things going on in the Anglican Church, sometimes the uh, other parts of the Protestant Church, and if you're lucky, we even talk about a Roman Catholicism a little. Um, I got my notes for today, but first, Gavin, you had another anniversary. Oh, yes, t t 21 years. <laughs> yeah, no, it's huge, it's huge. Uh, I've got a feeling that I thought I was doing Mrs. Ashenden a favor when I married her. Um, I was so completely wrong. <laughs> I've discovered I'm really, over 21 years, I'm really quite a difficult person. Yeah. But I'm learning, slowly. <laughs> I look back uh, once in a while at my uh, wedding pictures from uh, May 13th, 1989. And my mom and dad uh, were quite certain that this was a short time uh, thing that was about to occur and you can see in their faces they're like she's way above him they, they, it's like he, <laughs> a pauper is marrying a queen you know a, a princess and she's like and you can see in their eyes yet every year after that they're like I can't believe it they're, they're, it's still going it's still going you know and I think we're gonna hit 29 years this year 28 years oh it's just uh, marriage is uh, beyond reason something I have no understanding of, but it works. And uh, that's that's all I ask. What I ask of the audience is that you donate likes. Uh, you see in this video, either on Facebook or YouTube, just click the like right there. Click, 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 like. Um, if you really brave, you can share us. And we're gonna do something different this week. I dare you to share us on the Anglican Communion's official pages or the Episcopal Church's oh. official pages. If you want to go and <laughs> share us in uh, uh, the Episcopal uh, Facebook page, go ahead. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, that's, that's bravery right there because I was banned uh, from the Episcopal website Facebook page. So uh, I can't do it, but you can do it for me. Uh, Gavin, we're going to move on here to the news. Uh, the Bishop of London told us uh, almost two years ago that it's time to retire, time to 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 move on, do whatever uh, bishops do when they retire, and the rumor started. Who is going to replace him? Now, here in America, when there's a new bishop, uh, there's a group of people put together. They find a list of names, and like in the Episcopal Church, uh, they bring the candidates in, and then at convention they have an election uh, and it can go one round or two round or three rounds uh, including the the laity and the, and the clergy together uh, help decide who the bishop is it's done a little differently over in England we have something called the Crown Nominations Commission <clears throat> and uh, it's made up out of people who half a dozen people who represent the diocese uh, half a dozen people who are voted there permanently by General Synod uh, and the Archbishops of Canterbury who sit on it. And it's served by the Archbishop's secretary, who is a kind of gatekeeper to the whole thing. Uh, and indeed, over the years, many people have suspected that the secretary for uh, nominations for the Archbishop wields uh, an unusually polished influence uh, in that people look to her for information on candidates that she may have in file. Uh, and and uh, but how one doesn't one doesn't know because um, the proceedings are confidential. Every so often, somebody breaks a confidence. There was a dean of Southwark called Colin Slee, yes, who was so emotionally incontinent that he was unable to keep the promises. <laughs> and he spread them everywhere, uh, and people got very upset. It's clear that you do have to keep confidence, but for that reason, the rumours about who the shortlist comprises of are, are, are just that, they're rumours. You have to decide whether you believe them or, or don't. Well, the news of uh, Justin Welby being chosen as the next Archbishop of Canterbury, that broke maybe a week before it was supposed to. Um, and that's just the way things happen over there. I'm bringing this up because I hear that Monday they're going to announce that the new Bishop of London. Um, so this is a perfect time for you and I to sit down and talk about the rumours. 
I'm not hearing nothing over here. There's a, a complete <laughs> news blackout on the East Coast of America. What are some of the rumors you're hearing? Well, um, the favorite is supposed to be Stephen Cottrell, who's a liberal Catholic. Um, and uh, he's he's sought to be the, um, the compromise candidate. Um, he's uh, had a lot of experience as a diocesan. I think the Diocese of Chelmsford, if I remember rightly. I, I don't know him very well. Um, but he hasn't made any huge mistakes, which is greatly in his favor. Uh, the real question is, is this going to be our, um, our Jefferson Shorey moment? Uh, there, are, there are two two women, one a bishop already and, and, and one not, one a, uh, one a chaplain to, the, to parliament. Um, and, uh, and one of them could certainly be our Jefferson Shorey. Uh, and that would, that, would, that would be exciting. You say Jefferson Shorey, it's, a, it's, it's uh, Jeffert Shorey, but I do remember, oh, it? so no, no, uh, it, it's <laughs> an easy it's mistake to make difference. because Thomas Jefferson <laughs> cut his Bible up, uh, keeping only the parts he wanted. Uh, clearly, there's maybe a, a hint of uh, commonality there. You're, you're crediting me with much too much intelligence and information. <laughs> <laughs> Just a silly mistake. I'm so sorry. No, anyway. no, no. no. <laughs> Jefford story indeed, um, uh, but we we uh, so so those are the rulers. Uh, uh, one of the uh, favourite women is the new bishop of Gloucester, uh, Rachel Treweek, uh, a speech therapist in an earlier life, and f famous for saying that uh, she was concerned about calling God Father uh, or not, um, and um, uh, and then the. Uh, uh, the other is is um, a very well known woman priest who's uh, now chaplain to the House of Commons, whose name is escaping me. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Casual Friday. It's okay, Gavin. <laughs> <Sorry. No. laughs> I'm terrified. It's Alzheimer's. I read in the papers the other day about this man who the first the first sign of Alzheimer's was or the growing dementia was he couldn't find his keys and couldn't remember names. In which case, I've been deep into this for ten years. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over. Well, I don't know if people can see it on camera, but my face today is completely red. I tried to fix it before we went to uh, tape here. Um, I have a new uh, customer who loves Indian curry food. And I'm trying to negotiate a new contract with him. He goes, Kevin, you want to do Indian food today for lunch? Sure. <laughs> well, <clears throat> my background is Norwegian. Uh, the family tree goes right there to Oslo. And for Norwegian, ketchup is hot food. We don't have a, 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 a spicy diet whatsoever. And so about you know the time the salad came, or whatever they served with this rice thing, it's just sweating bullets. So I, I think I've required, covered a little bit, but I'm going to be editing the video to, to take all the red out of my face. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not ashamed. It was dinner. <clears throat> so <laughs> and I've, remembered, I've remembered the name, which which makes me feel so much more sane. Uh, it, it was Rose Hudson Wilkin. I, I first oh, yeah. met Rose on, on the World Council of Churches, where oh, Kevin, uh, my door has just blown open and the small heat that i have is rushing out go take care of it no no go take care of it i will i will suffer for jesus oh, <laughs> for limits what i'll do with anglican <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> you are freezing out there well i mean I woke up, it was 9 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know what that calculates in Celsius. Probably negative 15? 58, I think. Yeah, and so uh, just as cold as can be here. Uh, I And I have an electric car. Starts up and heats in seconds. But I didn't want to go to the car. I just wanted to stay inside. It was one of those days. And so when I see you're, you, you want to take a break to shut your door? Absolutely. It's winter in England. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is the snow outside. I first met those in um, the World Council of Char Churches when it met in Harare in uh, I think probably uh, the early nineties, and um, she single-handedly arranged for the Russian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox uh, delegation to walk out. 
Mm. Um, there was a debate of some kind, and she stood in front of the um, of, of the the feminist Scandinavian delegation, which were all women, and she basically did this wonderful feminist piece of oratory, uh, which which had the Scandinavian ladies stamping their feet and and, and uh, showing their teeth. And in the middle of it, the Eastern Orthodox delegation got up and walked out in protest. And I thought, well, this lady knows knows how to uh, how to use rhetoric. Um, she's um, she's a formidable person. Um, uh, she's not everyone's cup of tea, but she's very much some people's cup of tea. She would certainly take the progressive agenda uh, a long way further, which is why um, I loosely compare her to Jeffords Shorey. Uh, it's, it's, he wouldn't be the Archbishop, but the Bishop of London has a great deal of influence. And uh, if if the Bishop of London wanted to, could easily use the the bishopric for a public platform. Charters was very restrained and, and patrician, and on the whole, felt that that um, such publicity was probably a bit beneath him. Um, but it's a great platform if someone wanted to use it. That brings it, yeah, a great point because there would be no ACNA. There probably wouldn't be a, a a strong GAFCON if it were not for the the reign, the terror of uh, presiding bishop Catherine Jeffers Shorey. Um, it would be interesting if uh, something like that happened in England uh, to catapult uh, the AMIE and uh, the the Free Church of England to a, a new norm. Well, one of the things that's already happened is the um, the news on St Helens Bishop's Gate. Now, not everyone will know about this church. It's a it's a very evangelical, very Protestant church. It has large congregations in the city of London. It has excellent Bible teaching. It is it, it um, its most famous rector was Dick Lucas, uh, who is a very well known and highly respected Bible teacher. It 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 pastors. Uh, people who work in the city of London, particularly during during their lunch hours. Um, and uh, it, it's wealthy, it's strong, and it's influential. And it, it's been in the news for two reasons. First of all, it sent a letter to the deanery. The deanery in Anglican terms is a, a group of about uh, 15 to 20 parishes, a kind of mini part of the diocese, saying that because of the way in which uh, the Church of England and the deanery and the diocese were uh, were teaching and talking about uh, homosexual relationships, it would no longer play a formal part in deanery affairs. It would walk alone. In one sense, it never has played much of a formal part in, in the bureaucracy of the Church of England, but it, it, was an, it was a significant moment to make that statement. And it was followed up in a sermon uh, last Sunday when the rector of St. Helens said that his first question to the new bishop would be to ask him or her to declare as sin what God calls sin. If the bishop does not condemn homosexual relationships as sinful, then some form of break will be unavoidable, said William Taylor last week. Uh, and um, the numbers are they have about 2,000 worshippers across their four services. So if we had a, a progressive bishop or whatever sex, and the bishop fails to call sin what the Bible calls sin, it could be the St. Helens Bishop's Gate uh, makes a a distinctive and uh, prophetic stance of some kind. Hmm. Oh, let's we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe we could do a live show when they uh, announce the the new bishop. We'll see what happens. Um, that would be exciting. We talked almost uh, two months ago about George Bell, and to give a, a little background uh, before we get into it, uh, George Bell, very famous uh, uh, clergyman from England. Uh, was accused of uh, a sexually assaulting a woman when she was younger. And this put into effect a chain of events that nobody was prepared for. And I, we need to be up front right here. Gavin and I are not here to speak of innocence or guilt. We're here to talk about the process and how the process was not, there wasn't a process to follow. And George Bell's reputation uh, and history may have been uh, thrown away because of that. And that's what we're speaking of. We're not going to speak here of the innocence or guilt, but let's talk a little bit about the new report that came out from Lambeth that talks about what happened to George Bell. Well, the exciting thing, Kevin, is it's, it's out in a day or two. Mm -hmm. But okay. what we, we... I thought it was already out because I had a copy. <laughs> <laughs> you really have a copy. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe maybe I just think it's not out because no one's given me my copy. But <laughs> whatever. Let's say it's clearly it's clearly out and in possession of people of influence, but yeah. but um, the hoi polloi uh, don't have it. However, what we do know, then it's going to be excoriatingly critical of the Church of England. Uh, for failing to follow due process. But this isn't a, any surprise because um, most of us knew that already. We knew what the process was and we knew how lamentably lacking it was. But Lord Carlyle uh, is going to, uh, has, has had a, a formal review uh, and all the signals are um, that he's going to be very critical indeed of the Church of England. What the Church of England did was, for, first of all, George Bell's reputation is, is is enormously high. Um, Single-handedly, he restrained the um, uh, the use of carpet bombing uh, by the Allies in in the Second World War. Uh, this was very unpopular in some circles, um, where where revenge and pragmatism were thought to favour the obliteration of German cities and the wiping out of civilians. Uh, George Bell was a friend of Bonhoeffer. Uh, he was a man of immense moral stature and um, really one of the few great people that Anglicanism has thrown up in England over the last century. The, so, who hasn't been martyred, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when an accusation was made by somebody who's really very elderly now called Carol, uh, that she had a recollection that a senior clergyman that she thinks was the bishop took her into an old building that she thinks was the bishop's palace. Uh, and sexually assaulted her on the stairs of what she thought was the bishop's palace. Um, there were no witnesses. The corroboration was very thin. Uh, it sounds like the report is going to say that uh, the, the, that her recollection of who the person was is much too unclear to to give any confidence that she has she knows who the bishop of Trichester was. Um, at the same time. The questions that should have been asked about his diaries, where he was, um, weren't asked. And the people who were with him say that, that he was hardly ever unaccompanied, even for a moment. He was an immensely busy bishop, and his diaries show where he was um, 18 hours of the day. But, but the questions, this doesn't mean that Carol was wrong. It, it just means that the questions weren't asked. Questions that, if they had been asked, would at least have been provided a basis for defending his posthumous reputation. So the fact that it looks like a couple of, of, of present bishops, notably Bishop Warner, the present Bishop of Chichester, uh, and Bishop Paul Butler, the Bishop of Durham, who was responsible for safeguarding, were so quick to jettison his reputation, makes have made people ask, well, why? Why, why were they so willing to throw overboard the reputation of, of, of one of the great Anglicans. Was it because it can't be because they were sure he was guilty, because the information just wasn't anywhere near the level of proof required uh, at a civil court, let alone a criminal court. And the answer seems to be because they wanted to show people they were on the case of sexual abuse, uh, that um, they were as keen as mustard to, to, to act properly where the Church of England had acted improperly. But the problem is that, that uh, where the England, where the Church of England acted improperly, particularly in the case of the suffragan bishop of Chichester, Peter Ball, you, you don't make up for it by destroying another bishop who looks as though he was probably innocent. Um, so the, 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 the problem is that it looks like the Church of England has been very uh, Ill, inefficient um, and, and, and immoral. I mean, you, it, it should have some duty of care to people's reputations, especially when they're posthumous, as it has a duty of care to any victim who comes forward and makes a claim. But the balancing of those two things is quite difficult, uh, and it appears it's beyond the capacity of the Church of England at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this throughout history. A reaction to something is always worse than the, uh, the action itself, and uh, it, it hurts me to see this. Uh, was you know first of all we want to believe uh, accusations we want evidence um, and it's so hard because guess who's not here with us right now mm. you know George Bell is is uh, somewhere else and we, we have in you know elderly person and their recollections and 
it's hard. I, I, I get it's hard, but uh, I... This report is really scathing. I just wanted to go there, <laughs> but <laughs> let you know. <laughs> well, Gavin, that is a good 20 minutes for our audience this week. I know we wanted to cover a couple more things, but we can grab that next week. Maybe we can do a show with the Bishop uh, a London announcement next Monday. We'll see what your schedule allows for and what the the weather. Any snow coming your way? Oh, it's slowly melting. It's it's um it's exciting to have uh, to be able to go down our drive without the prospect of slipping and breaking one's neck and ending back in hospital again. So you know, of these small joys, great happiness from them comes. <laughs> Amen. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. You've been following episode 354 of Anglican Unscripted.